What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and yes, this is a different background. This is a different setup. I'm not converting to this setup, although I do really like the way it looks. Let me know because I might actually start doing this for no more reviews, but it's just because this is a much easier setup than my other one and I am so busy right now with the Halloween special and something else that I'm working on that I've already announced on social media, but I'm going to be announcing it here on YouTube as well. So, busy with the Halloween special, and I'm busy with that other thing that I will be announcing on the channel soon. Also, yes, I did change my channel name from Zaybeast Studios to Zaybeast. Um, I'm sorry I haven't addressed this in any videos yet, but I did change it from Zaybeast Studios to Zaybeast, because I want my channel to be more personal than Zabie's Studio. Zabie's Studios just sounds too distant to me, and I think just Zabiest is... I, th I would just rather my channel be called Zabiest. But yeah, because of how busy I am and because of all this stuff that I'm working on, I just did not have the time to sit down and do like an extremely formal video, even though this is probably going to be a somewhat longer video. It's just because I really, really wanted to talk about this show, and... I wanted to do it in a way that was time saving and it didn't it wasn't too time consuming because I'm still like today is day 2 of production for that thing that I'm working on and so I wanted to do this in a very time saving manner. So that's why this is all the way it is. I even have my laptop right here so that I can look like this is going to be very very informal. It's just going to be talking about the show and what show, you might ask? Well, you saw the title. Look, unless you've been living under a rock for like the past few weeks, and I know I'm a little late to the party on this, you have heard of Squid Game, the new Netflix original South Korean show that is dominating Netflix's viewership, and man, I mean seriously, I, I don't know if it is yet, but last I heard it was very, very close to becoming Netflix's like most watched show ever. Um, it had like a, I don't know how many views it had on opening weekend, but meant like a lot of people watched this show. And so naturally, it became very popular among my demographic, and everyone was talking about it. Not many people were recommending it to me, it's just people were talking about it. Which intrigued me, because usually, when a big show comes out or a big movie comes out, especially on Netflix, um, and people aren't recommending it, they're just talking about it because they just want to talk about it. That, to me, is a, more of a sign that whatever it is is actually really good rather than people just saying, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Not to say that those stuff, that, that stuff isn't good, too. I'm just saying it's something that I noticed. And it took me a minute to watch the show, but I eventually cut on and I eventually did watch it, and I completely understand the hype. There there are very few times where things like this actually live up to the hype. You know, it can get kind of annoying people just hyping something up so much and then you watch it and it's good, but was it really worth all that hype? Squid Game is one of the few things, like one of the few shows, at least within the past couple of years, that I actually think is absolutely worth the hype. Season one is on Netflix. It's nine episodes long. I watched the whole season and man, what a masterful show. So the first part of this video is going to be spoiler free and then I'm going to talk about some more spoilery things in the other part of this video. So let's talk about the show itself, kind of like a formal review. The production design and the performances and the filmmaking on display in this show is truly top tier. I love it when directors of TV shows treat it as if they are directing a professional feature film. That is my preferred television. That's why I love Breaking Bad so much. That's why I love Lost so much. That's even a lot of like anime. Like that's why I love Beastars so much. You know, it just feels so cinematic all the time and so thematically rich. That's my preferred type of television. Like, could you imagine if Blade Runner 2049 was the pilot episode to a sci-fi show on Netflix? Like, seriously, it's crazy how much people's perspectives change when you just change the situation. Like, Blade Runner 2049 was this almost three-hour-long epic sci-fi film, you know? But change the context a little bit. Imagine if Netflix announced that they were going to be making yet another sci-fi drama action show. And then they drop the pilot episode, and the pilot episode is almost three hours long. Because it's not, it's not unusual for the pilot episode of a show to be longer than the other episodes. So imagine that the pilot episode of this sci-fi show that Netflix is making is Blade Runner 2049. That would get so much praise, and it would be so monetarily successful 
But that's not the reality. In reality, Blade Runner 2049 was a cinematic masterpiece sci-fi epic that flopped monetarily because no one cared. That's all just coming back around to the fact that people watch shows like this and they see how great the filmmaking is and they're like, man, I want to see more of that. And it's like, you can see more of that if you go and see these movies that I'm talking about. But anyway, that's my, that's my opinions on that. The filmmaking on display, the cinematography, the shots and the sets and the way everything is captured in this show is absolutely incredible. So how about the story? Well, this is actually one of my favorite aspects of Squid Game. If you don't know, and I probably should have said it earlier, Squid Game tells the story of a bunch of people who are in a lot of debt. Like, they really have nothing going for them. And then they are all lured, I'll use the word lured, they're all lured into this place where these people are there and they force all these people who are in debt like everyone in this facility like they lure them to this facility facility and all the people who have been lured there are in some form of like horrible debt that they cannot get out of and the authorities at this facility um have these people play children's games like red light green light or tug of war or you know just Things like that. They have them play children's games, um, and with the and there's prize money of like what is it, forty six billion won or something, something like that. It's like around forty six billion won or something. So like a lot of money, and that's the prize money. But the twist is, um, you die in the games. Like if you like in red light, green light, if it detects your movement, you're dead. And that is definitely the main hook of the show. The games and the game sequences, and indeed, they are incredible. There is an image in the first game, Red Light, Green Light. There's an image after the first person dies, and his blood, like, splatters onto this woman's face, and it just pans up to her. She's, like, rubbing her face, and then she looks at her hands, and she just screams bloody murder. That is iconic already. Like, that's going to become a poster for this show. The performances are also off the charts. Seriously, all of these actors are giving it 100%, except for later in the show, which I'll talk about later when I get to the spoiler section. But seriously, this cast is really giving it 110%, and a lot of it really contributed to how tense this show is. This show takes a page right out of the Breaking Bad book, where there's always something pressuring the characters. There's always some problem that they have to deal with, usually multiple problems at the same time. There's always something pestering them, something that they have to deal with, and in many cases, something life-threatening. That makes great television, but you gotta make sure it's well-written, too, because you don't just want to rely on shock value. There are many shocking moments in Squid Game, and I'm very happy to say that it is not just for shock value. It is actually very well woven into the story, and it is a very very well written show. There are some conversations in this show that are still just stuck in my head. It is a South Korean production, and if you guys know me, you know that I love South Korean cinema. Two of my favorite South Korean films of all time are Train to Busan and Parasite. I love both of those movies so much. I have both of them on Blu-ray. They are amazing. So just the fact that this was a South Korean production alone was a hook for me to watch the show. And I know this may come off as repetitive, but I really cannot get over how well made this show is. Seriously, the sets, the performances, the writing, and the cinematography, and the use of slow motion in some scenes especially, I just, I can't get over it. It is such a well-crafted piece of art. And without getting into spoilers, which I'm about to do, a lot of people are divided over the ending of this season. Now, a season two was not planned, um, and if I remember correctly, the director said that if he does make a season two, it's probably gonna focus on some other characters in this world and not necessarily the characters in this show. I think that would be a poor decision. I would definitely like more focus on the other characters that he was talking about, but the characters they set up in the show are characters that you care about so much. I care deeply for so many of these people, and that's why a lot of these game sequences were very, very intense. However, the ending of this season sets up an arc for the next season involving the main character, 
So I would have to assume that season two would have to follow that character, right? I don't know. I mean, it's not a criticism of the show itself, but I'm just saying what I think would be like the wisest decision for the second season. I'm going to get into spoilers soon, but I still want to say some other things about the show. As I said, the game sequences are truly thrilling and very tense, almost unbearably tense. They reminded me of the tension in Don't Breathe, which I am going to be covering on the Halloween special. Um, it's also extremely dark. Like, this is a very dark show. There's not really any hope or happiness to be found in this show at all, which for some people, completely understandably, that is going to be a turnoff. I already know some people who, who stopped watching it because it was just constant darkness, and even people who recognize that it's a very good show, it's just not personally for them, which is totally fine, man. I mean, you're free to have your opinions and your viewpoint. For me, you guys know me. I'm drawn to stories that are dark. I'm drawn to things like that, not because... Like, not in a damaging way, though. It's just because I think that those types of stories contain some of the most important messages, and Squid Game definitely has a lot to say a lot about money and classism and ageism is even in here, too. Like, seriously, this this uh, show has a lot going on in it. It's very layered and very complex on an emotional level. And yeah, I said the game sequences are intense, but a lot of it does have to go to just how relentlessly violent this show is. This show is so violent, and for me, all the better for it, because it just makes it so much more intense, and there are practical effects used. There is CG implemented in some scenes, but I found that it was woven in pretty perfectly to make some really, really impressive shots. But yeah, if you're squeamish, be, be weary of that when you're going in to watch this show. But that's not all the show has to offer. As I said, it's extremely well written, and you really, really care about this, and you really care about the characters and the situation that they're in, and that's just, that's South Korean cinema in general, like Train to Busan, you know, it's very violent and there's a lot of action and stuff like that, but at the heart of that movie, the reason you remember it so much and the reason it sticks with you is because of the emotional payoff of the characters. Same thing with Parasite, it's not like there was action in that movie, but there were a lot of like really suspenseful sequences and stuff like that, but the reason you remember it is because of the ending and that ending monologue and that insane birthday party massacre. That's why you remember Parasite. So yeah, Squid Game is easily one of my new favorite shows ever. I think it's so good, and a lot of people are divided on the ending, but I'm not going to give my thoughts about that now. I'm going to talk about that in the spoiler section. So I'm going to grade season one of Squid Game, and then I'm going to talk about spoilers. Not all the spoilers, just the things that I want to talk about. All right, I'm going to give season one of Squid Game an A. It is truly a fantastic show, not for the faint of heart, but I definitely recommend it if you're in and a fan of um, really intriguing, um, well-written characters and a really gripping story that just holds you in tension. Definitely recommend it if you're into that stuff. Okay, so let's talk about spoilers, and I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into the ending. So our main character, and I apologize if I mispronounce some of these names, I have them pulled up here so that I can even remember them. I'm sorry if I mispronounce stuff, that's all on me, but I'm going to try my best. So our main character, Gihun, his motivation is set up very well in the first episode. You learn that he's very down on his luck, he's extremely poor, he's in a lot of danger with gambling, he's in a lot of debt, obviously, and um, his relationship with his daughter is set up, and this is essentially the main motivation for him that is set up, and that his daughter is going to be moving to America with her mom and stepfather. And the only way that Gihun can, you know, be her father again is if he can prove in court that he is financially stable enough to even support a child. It's a very well-written motivation, and so when he gets into the games, you really do root for him because you care about him. You understand that he's done a lot of crappy stuff, and he's kind of a, a screw-up, but you care about him on a sympathetic level. The reason I'm talking about that is because we're talking about the ending now. The ending of the show, I completely understand why some people are very disappointed. I completely understand why some people found it, for lack of a better word, lame. Um, however, look, I do have problems with it too, but I don't think it's bad. In fact, I love the arc that they set up. Essentially, after, uh, you know, um, Sang Woo kills himself in the final game, uh, you know, Gihan obviously wins, he has all the money, you fast forward a year later, he's not doing anything with it, but the very end of the final episode teases a revenge story of Gihon swiping the card 
and saying that he wants to re and like saying that he's re-entering the game and instead of getting on the plane to go see his daughter he turns around and walks away to go get revenge on the people who committed these atrocities against all these people when they lured them into their games now look i feel like thematically that is disappointing for a lot of people but i also think that it's a logical progression of the events of the show. This man is so traumatized, and he had to watch so many of his friends die. He had to watch his childhood best friend kill himself in the final game, which was Squid Game, which, you know, we obviously expected that to happen, and that was fairly predictable. Not that saying Wu was going to commit suicide, but I mean, uh, die by suicide, but that he was, but that the final game was going to be Squid Game. We expected that, but I love that that was still the case, because, I mean, we all wanted that too, right? So here's the thing. The ending is 50-50 for me. I love the revenge story that they set up, because you really want to see the people behind this game just be brutally butchered. However, it is kind of disappointing to me that they lost sight of the motivation that was set up in episode one so well, that being his daughter. However, the show is kind of a tragedy in a way. So... It's kind of, I think that the, what they're going for is the tragedy of him being so traumatized and so filled with rage towards these people that it overpowers his emotional tie and his love for his daughter. I think that conceptually, that is really amazing, and that's why I'm more on the positive end of this ending. And plus... We gotta get a season two. Enough people have watched this show by now. Netflix is not just gonna let this show, you know... They're, they're not just gonna pull the plug on this show. Like, they're going to make a season two. It, it hasn't been greenlit or anything yet, but come on. They have to. They're going to. So the ending is, you know, 50-50 for me, but I'm more on the positive side of it. I do think it is uh, a good ending. You know, it may not be entirely emotionally satisfying, but, like, from a writing perspective, I think it's a very good ending. And from a storytelling perspective, two thumbs up. Now, you might have wondered why I didn't give the show an A+, and I did, uh, you know, kind of hint at earlier that there was a specific aspect of the show that didn't really work for me. And that is when, you, you already know what this is, in episode 6 when the VIPs show up. These are when American actors are brought in and they're speaking English. You know, it's not the it's not the dub because the dub of the show sucks. Watch it and sub. They bring it. It's actual American actors who are playing like these people from America who are coming to see these games and everything. And they're known as the VIPs. They're like the real um, head honchos of this entire thing that's going on with uh, the Squid Games and all that stuff. Um, these actors are not good. <laughs> they have, but I feel like some of that also has to go to the dialogue. They have some very, very over-the-top dialogue and very cringe dialogue, and they kind of took me out of the show a little bit. And there's one scene with one of them that I thought was completely unnecessary. Now, I'm all for unnecessarily violent and unnecessarily, like, over-the-top things in, 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 you know, media, fictional media. But, I don't know, there was a scene with him that I felt, I was like, this, this doesn't serve anything. That This is literally just here to add to how disturbing everything already is. Um, however, the way that scene wrapped up was very satisfying. I don't know. Um, the main problem is the actors here, because they suck. Um, I love this show, and it hurts me to say that any part of it sucks, but the, the, the people who play the VIPs, the VIPs are easily my least favorite part of the show. Costume designs are great, the concept is great, but oh my god, the execution of them, not so great. That being said, the games that the VIPs spectate, the glass hopping game, that's amazing, that's freaking awesome, I love, that is such an amazing idea. And also with, you know, the finale, the squid game, where uh, Gihon has to fight Sang Woo, um, also very well executed. My least favorite aspect of the show is easily the VIPs, and thankfully they don't take up a big portion of it. Like I said, they don't even show up until episode 6, there's only 9 episodes, and they're pretty much only in the show for episodes 6 and 7. Oh, I want to talk about the marble game too. Yeah, the marble game is easily the one that everyone cried at. Oh my god, when the old man um, revealed that he wasn't actually forgetting, he was just seeing if uh, Gihon would actually trick him. Oh, man. 
and he and, and and the two and the two girls who were playing together too, their decision to not play at all and just to wait till the end and just to get to know each other with the amount of time that they had. And then uh, one of them, what was her name? What was her name? I must know her name. Sai Byuk, uh, the girl who was playing with Sai Byuk, um, her decision to just willingly lose the marble game and that whole monologue that she had about how she doesn't have anything to go back to out in the world and that dying in this game is just what's what's best for her, like that's the better option. Man, that was really, really sad, and especially, you know, the uh, closure with Saibyuk's arc when, you know, Sangwoo kills Saibyuk, and then when um, Gihon actually gets out of the game, giving all the money uh, to Sangwoo's mother, and then having Sangwoo's mother look after Saibyuk's, uh, Saibyuk's brother, um, because Saibyuk and Gihon promised to look after each other's families, depending on whichever one of them got out. That's a very, very well-wrapped up arc. I really, really love that. Oh, and Ali's death too. Yeah, that was really messed up of saying Wu and what he did, but, you know, in that situation, you can't really, you know, blame anyone for what they did, and oh my goodness, the Marble game where the guy's partner was his wife. Ugh. The show really just, it doesn't give you a break. Like, it's literally just constant sadness all the time. <laughs> Just constant intensity and sadness. However, there are there's some very few comedic moments. However, there is some very well done comeuppance in the show as well. And the show teases a lot of very satisfying comeuppance uh, come second season with that revenge plot that it sets up. Um, with Gihun, you know, deciding not to get on the plane and to get revenge on the people who did this to him. Very, very well done. Uh, so yeah, um... This is a fantastic show, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's easily one of the best Netflix originals you can watch right now, and I'm very much looking forward to season two, which has to happen. Like, it just has to happen, right? So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this format. I really like just sitting down and just casually talking about Squid Game because I really do love this show that much, and yeah, it's great. So let me know down in the comments what you thought of Squid Game. I'd love to have more discussions about it because there really is a lot to break down here thematically. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Look forward to episode four of my Halloween special, which is, or if you're watching this, that's probably already out. So, yeah, I don't know. Time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It really does mean a lot. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, keep writing, keep shooting, and keep editing.